Welcome to Literary Insights. This is the summary of the book Focus, The Hidden Driver of Excellence by Daniel Goleman. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Constant technology use and digital connectivity damage people's ability to focus, sustain attention, and be present. This could have significant consequences if unchecked. There are two types of distraction, external, sounds, noises, and internal, thoughts, emotions. Focus demands ignoring emotional distractions. Lack of stress can lead to anxiety, depression, and OCD. Focus leads to learning, memory, and flow. Minds frequently wander, reducing comprehension. Technology may be weakening, deep thinking. We have two attention systems, bottom-up, fast, intuitive, and top-down, slow, deliberate. Finding the balance between them is critical to productivity and well-being. Too much bottom-up, lack of self-control. Too much top-down, lack of spontaneity. We rely significantly on bottom-up processes for perception, habit, and skill. Top-down is crucial for overriding these and enabling complex thought. Both are needed, but balance requires effort. An imbalance can lead to poor self-regulation and suboptimal choices. Harmonizing bottom-up and top-down is critical. Bottom-up processing is implicit and can lead to biases and skews in how we direct attention. Marketers exploit this to influence shopping. Emotions can hijack our attention, flooding us with stress hormones. Resilience means calming these hijacks. Emotionally resilient people have more left prefrontal cortex activation, recovering faster from upsets. Cultivating focused attention and managing the relationship between bottom-up and top-down neural systems are crucial for well-being today. Understanding how these systems interact can help develop strategies to strengthen engagement, build resilience, and avoid manipulation. But technology and marketers can also exploit them if we are not conscious and vigilant. Overall, harmonizing top-down and bottom-up attention is ideal for optimal functioning. Self-awareness involves sensing what is going on inside ourselves, our thoughts, feelings, values, and body cues. It gives insight into our impact, strengths, weaknesses, and purpose. Lacking self-awareness leaves us oblivious to our flaws and shortcomings. Tools like 360-degree reviews, where we see ourselves through the eyes of others, can reveal gaps in our self-awareness and show how we come across to people around us. Our view of ourselves is often quite different from how others see us. Our sense of self arises from our interactions and relationships with other people. How others view us shapes how we view ourselves. But we rarely see ourselves as others genuinely see us or hear ourselves as others listen. Leadership programs use techniques like sharing life stories in small groups to help build self-awareness. Self-knowledge comes from self-revelation and reflecting on how our experiences have shaped us. Awareness of our tone of voice and how we express ourselves can provide insight into how others perceive us. Something as subtle as tone of voice can strongly impact whether others see us as caring, competent, and confident or as uncaring, incompetent, and insecure. A lack of self-awareness is problematic in leaders and those in positions of power or influence. Their behavior and decision-making suffer without insight into their flaws, weaknesses, and how they impact others. But self-awareness appears inversely related to energy and feelings of superiority or entitlement. Self-awareness involves tuning into our thoughts, emotions, values, and physical sensations. Our bodies provide signals that can guide us to decisions and actions that align with our purpose and integrity. The insula maps our internal state and is critical to developing intuition and gut feelings. Some of the few animals capable of recognizing themselves in a mirror, indicating a sense of self, are elephants, great apes, and dolphins. The neural mechanisms underlying self-awareness in humans appear related to networks that map our bodies and sensations. Two parts include the me, our conceptual sense of self, and the te, our experiential understanding of self. Surgeons could improve patient interactions and outcomes by developing vital empathy, emotional intelligence, and communication skills. These soft skills are as crucial as technical surgical expertise. 
Studies show patient satisfaction, trust in the surgeon, and willingness to follow postoperative care instructions are strongly influenced by the surgeon's bedside manner and empathy. Patients who feel heard, understood, and cared for by their surgeon tend to have better outcomes. Emotional intelligence, which includes self-awareness, managing your emotions, empathy, and sensitively handling relationships, can be learned and developed over time. This can help surgeons become better communicators and build rapport with patients. Communication and patient-centered care require focusing on the patient, listening actively and reflecting on their emotions, explaining complex medical information clearly while assessing understanding, and involving patients and families in decision-making. These skills contribute to patient empowerment and satisfaction. Involving patients as partners and using empathy to understand their experiences and priorities can help align their goals and expectations with the surgical care team. This leads to more realistic expectations, greater trust and cooperation, and better adherence to treatment recommendations. Continual learning and obtaining feedback from patients, peers, and mentors help surgeons strengthen their communication, empathy, and emotional intelligence throughout their careers. Intentionally developing these skills benefits both patients and physicians. In summary, while technical skill is essential, a surgeon's ability to communicate effectively, show empathy and compassion, and partner with their patients is equally important for achieving good outcomes and patient well-being. Emotional intelligence and soft skills can be enhanced through conscious effort and practice. Focusing on patient-centered care and shared decision-making helps build relationships that contribute to surgical success. Humans lack dedicated neural systems for understanding complex systems and dynamics. We know them indirectly through mental models, which are more or less data-driven. More data-driven models lead to more effective interventions and solutions. Native lore represents wisdom passed down over generations about survival in a particular place. It stems from hard-won experience and allows groups to thrive in specific environments. Much has been lost due to the marginalization of native groups and the adoption of modern technologies. Culture, including language, allows humans to accumulate and share knowledge in a way that transcends individuals. Different domains of expertise emerged, and experts passed on knowledge to others. Native lore was vital to thriving in ecosystems by knowing the correct times for activities like planting. Problems like climate change and pandemics are wicked or super wicked, highly complex with many interdependencies and no simple solutions. Addressing them requires a system's perspective to see patterns, dynamics, and interconnections. This includes balancing human intuition and judgment with technology like extensive data analysis. Examples of systems thinking include Polynesian wayfinding, which required reading subtle environmental cues, and Google using search queries to detect flu outbreaks. But human input is still needed to interpret the results. The neocortex enables higher cognitive functions but not self-awareness or empathy. Developing a system's mindset requires effort but is necessary to solve real-world problems. A balance of primitive and higher brain areas, and human and technological input, gives the broadest perspective. The key message is that cultivating a system's mindset, understanding complex interdependencies and dynamics, is crucial for solving modern challenges. This requires balancing intuition and data, human judgment and technology, and current and traditional ways of knowing. Wisdom passed down through generations often represents a deep knowledge of a particular place and should not be forgotten. Overall, a blend of ways of understanding gives the broadest perspective. Attention and focus can be strengthened through deliberate practice, like meditation. Repeated stress on a target, such as the breath, exercises the brain's ability to notice distractions and redirect attention. Experienced meditators show increased connectivity between mind-wandering and attention areas of the brain. Different types of practice develop different cognitive abilities. Focusing on a single point builds concentration, which can transfer to other skills. Broad, open awareness is also trainable. Emotions impact attention. Negative emotions narrow focus to perceived threats, while positive emotions broaden awareness of opportunities and connections. Feeling good activates the left prefrontal and reward areas of the brain. The ability to sustain positive emotion is measurable and tends to be lower in people with depression or anxiety. Positive emotions facilitate broadened thinking, 
creativity, and relationships. Overall, attention, emotion regulation, and types of thinking can all be developed through practice. Where and how we direct our attention and the emotions we cultivate significantly impact our experience and well-being. Developing concentration skills, broad awareness, and positive emotion can lead to a virtuous cycle of increased well-being, creativity, and connection. This essay highlights how attention, emotion, and patterns of thought interact in a dynamic, trainable system. Through intentional practice, we can strengthen specific cognitive abilities and skills related to well-being and productivity. The mind is ultimately adaptable, for better and worse, based on how it is used. But we can actively shape its tendencies through practice and habit. An ion is an atom or molecule that has gained or lost one or more electrons, giving it a charge. Ions are formed when atoms gain or lose electrons to reach a more stable electron configuration. Positively charged ions are called cations, while negatively charged ions are called anions. Cations have fewer electrons than protons, while anions have more electrons than protons. Ions are held together in ionic compounds by the electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions. This attraction is known as an ionic bond. The strength of ionic bonds depends on the charges of the ions. Higher demand leads to a stronger bond. Ions are essential for many biological processes and functions. For example, sodium, potassium, and chloride ions are necessary for neural signaling and muscle contraction. Calcium ions are essential for cell signaling, bone formation, and muscle contraction. Common cations include sodium, Na+, potassium, K+, calcium, Ca2+, and hydrogen, H+. Common anions include chloride, Cl, bicarbonate, HCO3, and hydroxide, OH. Ions are central to acid-base chemistry and electrochemistry. The concentration and movement of hydrogen and hydroxide ions determine the pH of a solution. Ions also carry charge in solutions, batteries, and fuel cells. In summary, ions are charged atoms or molecules that play an essential role in chemistry, biology, and physics. The loss or gain of electrons forms them and binds them together in ionic compounds. Ions are crucial for many biological and technological processes. Tony Hayward, BP's CEO during the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, lacked critical leadership skills like self-awareness, empathy, and managing perceptions. His poor handling of the crisis cost BP billions and damaged its reputation. Successful leadership requires balancing focus on yourself, others, and the bigger picture. Hayward failed at this, damaging relationships and ignoring the systemic implications. His actions showed a lack of emotional intelligence, which is increasingly vital for leaders. IQ and cognitive ability alone do not determine a leader's success. Soft skills like self-discipline, empathy, persuasion, and motivation are equally important. Studies show leaders strong in these skills create highly motivated teams, while those lacking them often demotivate their teams. Self-awareness allows leaders to understand their strengths, weaknesses, values, and impact on others. It is vital for developing emotional intelligence but must be noticed more in leadership competency models. With self-awareness, leaders can improve or motivate effectively. BP's crisis response and safety failures showed a systemic lack of leadership and accountability. Four executives faced criminal charges, and BP's U.S. operations were suspended. The disaster illustrates how poor leadership and a culture discouraging dissent or critical thinking can have catastrophic consequences. For leaders and organizations, Continual learning and development are essential to keep pace with increasing complexity. An inward focus on self-awareness and motivation must be balanced with an outward focus on relationships, the broader organization, and its environment. Achieving and sustaining this balance is the hallmark of leadership excellence. The Deepwater Horizon disaster provides a case study of how deficits in emotional intelligence, systems thinking, and self-awareness at both individual and organizational levels can lead to poor judgment, damaged relationships, and strategic failures with devastating impacts. For leaders, continuous self-reflection and lifelong learning are imperative to develop wisdom and meet the increasing challenges of our complex world.
leaders need a balance of strengths and mitigate weaknesses. Build teams with complementary abilities. Essential leadership skills are empathy, relationship building, and systems thinking. Effective leaders cycle between inward focus, outward focus on others, and systemic stress. They have an emotional aperture to perceive subtle cues and manage relationships. Analytical and emotional intelligence are balanced. Long-term thinking and planning for future generations are needed to solve global challenges. Politicians should consider long-term implications, not just short-term gains. Hard decisions today can benefit the future. Conscious capitalism considers all stakeholders. Leaders define a mission, work at multiple levels, and address big problems. They improve systems and ponder humanity's future. Understanding systems require a long time horizon. Short horizons lead to short-term fixes that need to be fixed. Longer horizons reveal critical systems and feedback loops. Transforming systems needs transparency, consideration of long-term interests, and action at scale. Progress takes time, but we must start now with vision and hope. We each have a role to play. Attention depends on motivation, emotion, cognition, and environment. Top-down and bottom-up attention have pros and cons. Mind-wandering provides psychological benefits if balanced. Practices to improve attention include mindfulness, cognitive training, and avoiding distractions. Redirecting our gaze or thoughts helps overcome biases. Leadership, systems thinking, and attention are intertwined. Wes, we can work together to build a sustainable F by developing essential skills and widening our horizon suture. Though difficult, this vision gives purpose and hope. Each small act matters in reshaping the whole. Deliberate attention requires conscious effort and intention. It involves top-down control of attention from the prefrontal cortex. Automatic attention happens unintentionally and depends more on bottom-up processing. Expertise and practice can turn deliberate attention into involuntary attention. Ways to improve attention include mindfulness meditation, physical exercise, sleep, limiting distractions, chunking information, taking notes, quizzing yourself, and teaching knowledge to another person. Mind-wandering or daydreaming has benefits when balanced with focused attention. When not focused on a task, the default mode network involves spontaneous thought, autobiographical memory, imagination, and planning. Mind-wandering may aid creativity by overcoming rigid modes of thinking. Achieving an optimal balance of attention and mind-wandering is essential for productivity, learning, relationships, and well-being. Excessive mind-wandering can impair task performance, while too much focus on tasks reduces the time for imagination and relationships. Dynamic interactions between the default mode network and executive control networks that mediate attention are required for optimal thinking and functioning. Many factors shape the occurrence and content of mind-wandering, including working memory capacity, attentional control, effect, creativity, and dopamine signaling in the brain. Disorders of attention and thought like ADHD, anxiety, and depression involve difficulties controlling excessive or impaired mind-wandering. Overall, this summary reinforces that attention and mind-wandering involve an interaction of deliberate top-down control and unintentional bottom-up processing in the brain. Achieving an optimal balance of these cognitive abilities is vital for well-being, learning, work, and interpersonal relationships. Understanding the neural underpinnings of attention and mind-wandering may provide insights into psychiatric disorders and tools for improving cognitive function, emotion regulation, and resilience. Emotional Intelligence Emotional intelligence refers to the ability to perceive, understand, and regulate one's emotions and the emotions of others. Key components include self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Emotional intelligence develops over time and can be enhanced through intentional practices. Skills like mindfulness, empathy, and reflection have strengthened emotional intelligence. Leaders with high emotional intelligence can foster more positive workplace environments. They exhibit qualities such as self-awareness, adaptability, empathy, and humility. Emotional intelligence is considered an essential leadership competence by many researchers and organizations. Leadership Effective leaders take a long-term, 
broad perspective and focus on the success and development of individuals and the organization. They leverage a variety of leadership styles, adapting based on the situation. Less effective leaders tend to rely on a single class and prioritize short-term gains. Key leadership skills include self-awareness, adaptability, empathy, creativity, collaboration, and synthesis. However, many leaders and organizations lack these skills, which are increasingly critical in today's complex world. Leaders play an essential role in shaping group dynamics and culture. Their priorities, focus, and values tend to spread throughout an organization. Leaders with a wide aperture, an open, flexible mindset, are better able to lead in volatile, uncertain times. They detect weak signals and understand both short and long term consequences of actions. Leaders can enhance their skills through deliberate practice. Recommended practices include mindfulness, seeking different perspectives, reflection, and building high quality connections. With improved self-awareness and empathy, leaders can better bring out the best in their teams and organizations.